This is Dr. Rhonda Johnson. Today is Thursday, March 3rd, 2022, and this is part two of my message, providing a high-level overview of President Biden's White House National COVID-19 Preparedness Plan. I mentioned on part one, uh, the overview, there are four key goals which are to protect against and treat COVID-19, prepare for new variants, prevent business and school shutdowns, and help vaccinate the rest of the world and save lives. So it's a 96-page document. I can't cover it all in one video. So I already covered the protection part, a high-level overview, and I'll cover next the treatment part. Uh, again, high-level overview. They plan to have a diverse, what they call diverse medicine cabinet, filled with more treatments than at any other point in the pandemic. Right now, one of the core foundational elements is the Pfizer antiviral pill, Paxlovid. So currently they have 4 million treatment doses available to Americans. They are working with Pfizer to have one more million additional courses. That's the whole five day uh, treatment regimen available in March and another 2.5 million courses uh, available in April. Now this is very timely because we know that the Omicron BA2 subvariant is doubling here in the United States. So hopefully these pills will be available for high risk people. So in total, they have secured 20 million courses of Pfizer's uh, antiviral pill Paxlovid, which has been shown to reduce the risk of hospitalization and death by 89%. And they per plan to provide access to treatments to all Americans who need them uh, with priority populations uh, being identified and making provisions for. They also plan this one-stop test to treat program. So they plan to use uh, locations at existing healthcare facilities. Um, and those include pharmacy-based clinics, community health centers, long-term care facilities, and the VA facilities across the United States. Now this is going to require a whole lot of new education for both public and providers so that Americans can rapidly access these uh, Paxlovid treatments. Now, they propose to have these one-stop sites operational by March, which I think is a very ambitious strategy, but again, it all depends on the resources that are deployed to treat this. So stay tuned for part three, which I'll be reviewing additional components of this plan.